sustainability and climate change was a big theme over 2018 and 2019, from the Extinction Rebellion in London to William Nordhaus getting the Nobel Prize in economics for his work on environmental and climate issues, to Greta Thunberg and her school strikes for climate change. It's been an issue that has dominated the agenda, and central bankers are also getting involved in this. Some have gone as far as call it the new frontier for central banks. Uh, Bank de France Governor Villera de Gallo said that it's equivalent to the fighting the financial crisis over the past hundred years or financing major infrastructure in the 19th century. From financing the transition to a carbon, a low carbon or carbon neutral economy, it's estimated by some estimates that uh, over 90 trillion will be needed um, between now and 2030 to finance the green transition and a lot of that will also be infrastructure investments that are needed. There is a big infrastructure investment gap. That's right. There's a lot of uh, demand for new infrastructure, especially in rapidly urbanizing areas. In more developed areas, there's a need to upgrade aging infrastructure. So increasingly, we are looking towards public investment institutions to fill that gap. Now, with the OMFIF uh, Global Public Investor Survey, we asked our respondents about their experience investing in sustainable assets, but also in real assets, so infrastructure and real estate. And among those that are already investing in uh, real estate and infrastructure, they have observed a significantly better performance for their assets in this classes compared to traditional asset classes. And I think something like 75% have observed significantly better performance of these um, uh, investments in infrastructure and real estate. Do we see the same trends in sovereign funds, pension funds, and central banks, or are there differences? That's a bit tricky because central banks, at least um, for a majority of the respondents who participated in our survey, nearly all of them are actually restricted from um, investing in real assets, and this is primarily because central banks are less likely to be allowed to invest in illiquid assets.